Hey everyone, Bill Sheridan here. We've talked a lot here lately about customer experiences. You know, everyone from Gene Bliss to Daniel Burris to Ken Schmidt raving about the truly great customer experience companies out there and how everything they do eventually circles back to providing uh, truly memorable experiences for their customers. Now we're going to talk to Bob Dean about the economics behind customer experiences. Bob is a Business Learning Institute instructor, and he's one of only a handful of certified experience economy experts out there. Uh, he says businesses not only have a lot of opportunities at hand by creating truly memorable experiences for their customers, but that it's becoming imperative that they do so. Uh, Bob identifies three industries in particular that can benefit uh, by providing meaningful uh, experiences for their customers, and those are healthcare, uh, education, and yes, folks, financial services. Uh, let's listen into what Bob Dean has to say about the experience economy. So, Bob, define the experience economy for me. Well, the experience economy is uh, something that was discovered by the authors, Joe Pine and Jim Gilmore a few years before they wrote the book, The Experience Economy. And what they found is that in many industries, goods and services were being commoditized. And what very innovative businesses were doing was creating new offerings for customers that were experience-based offerings. And that those were actually becoming more profitable and helping them grow their businesses and in some ways tr fundamentally transform their businesses. I, you know, I can give you a lot of examples, but that's basically the fundamental definition is the, the creation of another offering by customizing what had been a service into an experience and the reverse commoditization of many goods and services, um, which basically didn't differentiate anymore. Now, you describe what you call a shift in the very fabric of the economy. What has changed? Well, in, in 2009, uh, 10 years after writing the book, The Experience Economy, Pine and Gilmore ran one of their annual conferences called Think About, and I attended this in Philadelphia. So in 2009, we're right in the middle of the meltdown. And so the, the fundamental shift in the fabric of the economy was occurring as a result of the meltdown. And then they saw this as not only an opportunity for businesses to uh, succeed by creating experiences for customers, but they actually think it's an imperative. And in three industries, they basically said, we, know we need to go quickly to experiences and beyond experiences to transformation. And those three were financial services, health care, and education. Now, are we talking about experiences? Or are we <coughs> talking about something that can be bolted onto an existing business model, or, or do the business models themselves have to change? Well, I think uh, what has happened is in, uh, two things have happened in one situation, such as let's take Starbucks. Starbucks took a, an industry that was you know, very um, routine, like coffee, where we had coffee beans as a, as a commodity, we had the Folgers can as the good, and we had the pouring of coffee in a restaurant as the service. And they basically fundamentally changed the industry by introducing Starbucks as the coffee house experience. And the story now is well known. It's become a global industry, and it's a much bigger industry than it ever was before the coffee experience. So they created a new industry. In some industries, the, the ability to just go beyond <clears throat> services and create a new offering around experiences is more of the bolt-on. And that's what I'm thinking is going to be able to happen in financial services and in professional services. So uh, what are the benefits, or some of the benefits, that organizations that embrace this type of thinking um, can expect to, to experience? Well, probably the biggest one is a dramatically increased level of customer loyalty. Today, many businesses measure their level of customer relationship through a customer satisfaction survey. And however they do those, whether they're done on the web, whether they're done in an interview, the reality is <clears throat> J.D. Power has made an entire industry out of customer satisfaction ratings. But what Pine and Gilmore have found is that customer satisfaction by itself is not enough to create loyalty with a customer. That what's needed is a more intimate customer experience between the service provider and the client and also 
the ability to identify and eliminate customer sacrifice. Many customer satisfaction surveys do not even get at customer sacrifice, and customer sacrifice, the identification and elimination of it, can result in a much greater level of customer loyalty. What about risks? What are the risks for those who, who decide that they don't want to take this step? Well, the risk is that they will become undifferentiated, that there are opportunities for businesses to differentiate themselves through and grow their business revenue, at the top line revenue through customer experience. And those that don't do it may be undifferentiated and that may lead to extinction. Now, I, I'm just guessing, but I think most business folks, if you, if you put them to the test and ask them, would say, yeah, I absolutely put the customer first. What are some signs that maybe they're, they're not? Well, I think the biggest sign would be that they're probably not collaborating with them enough in everything they do. And they can collaborate with them in their problem solving. They can collaborate with them in helping their clients to accelerate how they respond to change by perhaps organizing collaboration communities among their clients. They can help their clients by activating more conversations with them whenever they meet as opposed to just, in my experience, sometimes meetings between a professional services provider and a client, it's just to execute a transaction. But activating conversations elevates the experience. And ultimately, and this is something we've read about for years, they need to become a trusted partner as opposed to an expert for hire. Let's say my business is, is facing you know this harsh reality that we're not providing the best customer experience that we could, um, or that we're providing flat out just bad customer experiences. Uh, how do we fix it? What, what, what are some ways that we can start? Well, the first thing you know you really need to do is I think find out what your own employees believe about their own interaction with their customers. Many companies are trying to innovate today, as you know, and one of the ways to innovate is through the customer experience. And that's a tall order. Innovation in and of itself is difficult to pull off and achieve success with. Probably 85% of innovation efforts fail. And I believe one of the reasons that happens is we rely too much on studies by consultants of what the company needs to do and, and not enough on just listening to our own employees about what they think we could do better to build customer relationships. Bob Dean, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it.